Today, in this video, we will take you through 30 years of Nero's reign that depicts his cruelty of intentionally burning the city to build his luxurious palace, ruthless spending on building the Golden Palace, plotting murders of family members including his mother, and his manipulation about the Olympics Games to accommodate his love for art, theater, athletic games that will blow your mind. Before we move ahead to how ruthlessly Nero spent his money, let us have a glimpse of his net worth. According to historians, an estimation of Augustus Caesar's net worth was $4.3 trillion, one of the richest emperors of Rome. There is no doubt that Julius, Augustus, and Claudius were also lavish spenders. They left Nero with lots of gold, jewels, golden utensils, and palaces. It is believed that they left him one-third of their wealth, which in modern day is estimated to be $1.5 trillion. This is when the reign of Emperor Nero, the most ruthless, self-centered, and extravagant spender in Roman history. Being a Roman emperor, ruthless spending was in Nero's blood. In the initial years of his reign, Nero reduced high tax rates and also increased the amount of free grain distribution to the poor and needy to win over the local people. But people adored him more for his generosity in offering public games and entertainment on a massive scale. Now, despite his image as a charitable ruler among the middle classes, Nero spent a large portion of his wealth on his lavish lifestyle. Roman banquets have always had fame since their rule. Nero organized banquet dinners regularly which served foods from across the world. It is estimated that each banquet's cost was around 10 to 15,000 Roman denarius coins estimating to modern-day $300,000, adding a minor inflation rate each year. Let's have a glimpse of these banquets. These banquets were filled with lots of delicacies from all over the world. Nero's banquets were extremely lavish. They included African ostriches, Indian spices and sugarcane, Ethiopian cumin, Syrian sumac, Greek olives, and extravagant homegrown figs from the royal gardens. Moreover, century-old wine was served in double-handled silver cups with the lyre being played in the background. In addition to that, troops and poets were called to perform for the entertainment of the guests. Imagine the extravagance of these banquets offered by Nero and the amount he spent on these banquets. Nero introduced the Neronian Games in 60 AD, which were inspired by Greek Olympics. He lavishly spent on these open festivals. To grab the attention of allies and win the hearts of people, he spent the royal fortune like water. These open festivals consisted of performances and sports competitions, as well as extravagant food and money donations to the poor. He put on a variety of shows, chariot races, theatrical dramas, and blood sports. Winners were showered with various gifts like birds of many kinds, magnificent meal dishes, and grain tickets. He also gave away apparel, gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, artwork, and other items as prizes. Not only that, but sometimes he also gave away trained wild animals, ships, buildings, and farms as prizes. Imagine the amount he spent on leisure activities that depict his ruthless spending. This doesn't end here. One of the weirdest incidents happened during this time. Apart from all the above activities, Nero aspired to be a professional opera singer. But the consensus was, he was not at all a good singer. He used to gather the public by paying them to attend his performances and gave away a lot of money. Initially, people liked it, but later they were fed up with it. Nero then used his power to show off his unliked singing skills. 
He used to gather people and put guards on the doors so no one would leave. Leaving the concert was considered disrespectful to the emperor and also punishable. One of his concerts was so lengthy and dreadful that it created a very unusual situation for the attendants. Many pregnant women in the amphitheater began giving birth right there in their seats. Moreover, the doors were guarded so that no one would flee disrespecting the emperor. Few people even attempted to jump from the ledge to flee. Another incident that depicts the ruthless spending of Nero was in 62 AD. According to some historians, Nero sent slaves escorted by soldiers to bring snow from the Apennine Mountains to decorate his table with rare foods to please Popea. The snow was then flavored with flower nectars, pulps of fruit, and honey to make cream ice. It was then served as a dessert on the royal table. In simple terms, another form of ice cream that we eat today. We can imagine how much Nero was indulged in extravagant spending that, just to please his lover, he sent slaves and soldiers to get snow from far off. The recreation of Rome was his most relentless expenditure by Nero following the great fire that destroyed much of the city in 64 AD. A fire broke out in the shops around the Circus Maximus, swiftly spreading across the city. Three of Rome's 14 districts were destroyed, and another seven were seriously damaged by the fire that continued for nine days. Nero is said to have been playing the lyre and singing on the top of his palace during the fire, according to several unconfirmed historical sources. Rumors immediately spread that the emperor had caused the fire to clear ground on the Palatine Hill for a larger royal palace. Nero diverted people's attention, blaming the fire on adherents of the emerging Christians. He ordered a variety of imaginative and horrific punishments like being ripped apart by dogs and others burnt to death on midnight pyres that provided light for the emperor's garden festivities. Soon after the tragedy, Nero ordered the construction of a massive new palace complex named Domus Aurea on land destroyed and cleared by the massive fire. The Palace Doma Aurea is also known as the Golden Palace. It was one of the most opulent Roman constructions ever constructed. This entire area was designed as a park, complete with pediments, terraces, traditional baths and fountains, as well as an artificial lake in the center. The palace also consisted of a big, circular, revolving dining area with a paneled roof from which the guests were showered with gifts. Its large golden dome, owing to which the palace got its name, was one of the many lavish components of its decoration. The structure had ceilings loaded with semi-precious stones and dressed in ivory, valuable murals, ponds, and fountains with an artificial lake. Most of the walls were covered in paintings, the chambers completed in white marble with forms that danced with light. The Domus Aurea also contained ponds and fountains that echoed the sound of water in the passageways. According to historians, Nero used much of his fortune to build this extravagant palace. Basically, rather than calling it a palace, it was a whole city. The cost is estimated to be a modern day of 10 to 20 billion dollars. Nero depleted the kingdom's wealth by constructing the city around his Domus Aurea palace complex, which spanned 100 acres. Adding on to that, he also ordered a 100-foot-tall bronze statue of himself as the sun god, the Colossus Neronis, to be placed in the middle. Calculating the value of bronze, this 100-foot-tall statue would be estimated to be approximately $200 million. According to some historians, Nero never wore the same outfit twice. He traveled with a fleet of 1,000 vehicles in which his pack mules had silver shoes on their hooves. 
It was one of the most lavish caravans in Roman history. The Roman Empire was in serious trouble. Instead of reviving the economy, Nero left for a long tour of Greece during this time. Nero took part in different sports and festivals across Greece. He also took part in the Greek Olympic Games in AD 67. He persuaded the organizers to conduct the tournament in a year according to his convenience. He auditioned for roles as an actor, singer, liar player, and chariot racer, and he supposedly won all of them by using his power and money. The winners were forced to submit their medals and trophies to the emperor. In 68 AD, while Nero was returning to Rome, he faced a revolt from Galba, the governor of Spain. Nero's people declared allegiance to Galba and declared Nero an enemy of the state. Nero failed to respond decisively to this revolt and attempted to flee at a slave's house. But upon learning that his arrest and execution were imminent, he took his own life at the age of 30. That's all for today, folks. Watch the video on the screen and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.